Sir, um, what are you expecting, uh, first of all, from today's meeting? Well, I think there's been an enormous amount of work has gone into this over three and a half to four years now. And we're optimistic that the uh, data protection regulation could be agreed today and, um, and sent to the European Parliament. Uh, there are a few outstanding technical areas and obviously there are different... Uh, some countries have, have areas where, where they, they'll probably want to, uh, to discuss again. Uh, but from our point of view, uh, I think the, the main items now have been largely thrashed out. Uh, and while there are certain areas that we would, um, I suppose, have preferred to see slight differences, we're broadly very happy uh, with, uh, with the, the new data protection regulation. What areas do you still have concerns about then? You're saying some areas are still not 100% happy with? Well, we, we, we feel that I suppose the, uh, the appeal mechanism may be somewhat cumbersome. So we're very happy that uh, there will be a review of that in two years' time to make sure that it's fit for purpose, that it's efficient, uh, and that too many cases aren't being referred to the, um, to the appeals process, the EDPB. Um, and I think that does take care of what is, I suppose, to be fair, a question as to whether it will or will not be, um, be as efficient as it could be. We, 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 we would have preferred if there were uh, stronger filters in place uh, to reduce and qualify what type of cases could be taken to an appeal board. Uh, but the core principle of the one-stop shop, which is a single point of entry uh, for citizens and businesses, so they'll deal with one data protection commissioner, that is in place and that has always been an ambition uh, of ours, uh, and I'm glad it, it is the agreed position of the of the union. Um, throughout this process, this long negotiation process, has been criticism about Ireland, in particular about the standard of regulation and the fact that so many of these internet companies are regulated in Ireland. Are, do you have any concerns that how this is going to impact on Ireland, or what would you say to those critics? Well, Ireland has a, has a very large number of the, the, of these uh, companies based in our country because we have an excellently well-educated uh, workforce. We have a competitive business environment. We're English-speaking. We're in the euro, of course. Um, so we have recently doubled resources to the Data Protection Commissioner and will look to continue to, uh, to increase um, uh, resources where necessary. We're also opening a new um, headquarters in Dublin to complement the other office. Uh, so the fact that we have a very significant footprint of these businesses um, uh, in our country doesn't in any way undermine our ability to, to, to regulate them. In fact, the new regulation, of course, will have a pan-European set of rules for everybody. Uh, the rules will be very clear, which is good. We've operated now under a 20-year-old um, uh, directive, which allowed, I suppose, different interpretations in different member states. So as we always do in Ireland, we will be uh, not found wanting at all when it comes to the the regulation uh, and the enforcement uh, of, of these new rules uh, that we are agreeing today. Uh, we have a strong tradition, of course, of ind independent regulatory bodies in, in the state uh, and our Data Protection Commission in particular, while um, you know uh, may have been under-resourced in the past, uh, now has significant new resources for the future. Um, there's a report today of a new Facebook job announcement. Could you comment on, on that, please, um, in Ireland, this new... Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, this is very welcome. Obviously, um, you know, we have uh, the fastest growing um, economy in the, uh, in, in, in the European Union um, um, and employment uh, continues to grow now very steadily, unemployment falling from 15.1% a couple of years ago, now down to 9.6, 9.7. And Facebook, yes, will be doubling their staffing uh, in Ireland and we very much welcome that. As I say, we have one of the youngest, most well-educated populations um, in Europe uh, and it's excellent and very encouraging to see that these companies are continuing to pick, uh, are continuing to pick Ireland as a source of uh, investment. And just one final question in your capacity as Minister for European Affairs. Um, the situation in Greece is deteriorating. Talks broke down last night and there's now fears about whether a deal would be struck ahead of the Eurogroup on Thursday. What would you say about the Greek situation? Do you think, who, who needs to move here? What, what do you think should be the next step? Well, it's been clear now for some time that it's, it's the Greek um, uh, government needs to move. Um, you know, we need them to come up with realistic, achievable uh, suggestions uh, as, they can, uh, as to how they can achieve the targets that are needed. Um, so we wish, we wish them very well on, uh, on, uh, on uh, Thursday at the, at the Eurogroup meeting. Um, but time is running out now, and um, you know there is a growing sense of um, 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 of concern um, that 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 to date we haven't seen you know proposals that will achieve uh, what is required from the Greek government, and um, there is very strong goodwill uh, from Ireland and I believe from the other member states uh, to come up with an accommodation that's within you know that's what that that that's that's what what but 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 it has to be an achievable 
um, set of um, set of targets for Greece, um, and that's you know to let the rest of Europe know that the model, the economic model, and the targets they set themselves uh, can be achieved, in fact, and that there is a future for their economy. Okay. Thank you.